why collegiate church planting? Well, it's this. The college campus is the most strategic mission field in the entire world. It has the most mobile, the most malleable, the most powerful mission force there is on the planet. So the idea of doing the collaborative, the, the idea of having the best of the best influencers from all over North America, people who have successfully planted churches on college campuses, it's just it's pretty incredible. People come into the environment and it's not like there's one individual or one uh, master of all things. It's people coming from different models, different methodologies, people who are all focused on planting on the college campus, coming together and sharing best practices, but not only just sharing, but listening and learning from other people doing planting in other places. So what's so incredible about it is there's not this headliner person who's speaking. There's not just this one thing that we're all coming to study. We're all coming to share. We're all coming to collaborate together. Hence the name Collaborative. And frankly, this is what I think is one of the best learning environments that uh, we've ever seen. The collaborative experience is one that's not like anything else because it's really about a group of people who do the same thing and beginning to share knowledge and begin to synergize what it looks like for us to be able to say, hey, this is what we do, this is how we do it. And in the collegiate sphere, this is the place where the knowledge is all put together. And so you find friends, you find new ways to do things. It couldn't get any better than that. And being able to come to Collaborative has really helped us uh, be able to ask questions of others who know some things about collegiate church planting ahead of us, who understand uh, what it means to reach the campus. And actually, every time we leave, something in our network, something in our system, something that the Lord reveals to us changes the trajectory and the way that we're doing things on campus for the better. And it's amazing. You know, the most encouraging thing about being here at Collaborative is that for years it felt like it was just me. And then I'm now in a room of hundreds of people that think the same, that believe our campuses desperately need churches that will point the students to Jesus. What a joy it is to be here. So thankful, so overwhelmed, so much to learn. So many uh, others that have gone ahead of us that we're learning from at Lyft. And so, uh, yeah, just great to be here. Thankful for being here. Thinking about all the all that's happened in the last couple of years, and uh, for me, it's been really fun seeing a ton of uh, old, familiar faces in the room, and then seeing this family of people growing every year has been really cool um, to watch uh, God begin to grow this uh, all across the country. So it's been really fun to be part of these years. One thing that I took away from today was just the value really the necessity of empowering everybody inside the church to do the work of ministry. And so that's something that's easy to forget. Sometimes we wear it on ourselves as those who are, um, you know, being paid to do ministry, but to really equip all different people inside of God's church for the work of ministry. My biggest takeaways from Collaborative are just how amazing Grace Point is and how encouraging and at the same time convicting being in this, the presence of you people are. And staying with Kevin Ho and his family was awesome. We love Grace Point and we love Collaborative. I just want to say thank you to Grace Point. For me, this time here has been a personal paradigm shift in that the Acts 2 church is a, it was something that I've never seen actually in real life. It's something we've lots of us have spoken about, but to see it being lived out was truly inspiring. For me personally, paradigm shifting, but more importantly for me, in my time here, God just got a hold of my heart and just really crystallized the importance of the campus and the importance of reaching young people in this precious time of life where they are so open to the gospel. My wife Wendy and I um, just finished the collegiate uh, church planting collaborative here at Grace Point and we are so thankful to have been invited by Brian Fry and the gang Man, the hospitality of the Grace Point folks is over the top. In fact, tonight I just ate what felt like the dinner we will have someday in heaven, and I enjoyed it so much I, I, had, to, uh, I had to repent for gluttony. That's what I had to do tonight. So um, I guess I'm happy and sad, but hold on, there's rejoicing after repentance. So I feel good now, so it was awesome. Listen, um, on a serious note though, this changed our life, the church, our church's life. Being here has given us vision, has given us an idea of some of the things we're gonna go do in the next 10 days, the next 30 days, the next six months, and the next year, which is rare for a conference. So well organized, so hospitable, the content was amazing, and leaders that are top in the field of collegiate church planting, we learned a ton. 
We hope we get invited again. I promise to not overeat. Thank you. God bless you. The potluck. Now, I heard people talk about the potluck, like it was this big deal, but I didn't believe it. And then we walked into the room on the last night of Collaborative. I've just never seen anything like it. I've never seen so many calories in one room all at the same time. But I'd like to go first 10 years back. So if we're looking at 2009, or where was your church at that point? 2009, we were, um, we had just finished planting at Austin, 2008. So when we sent off the Austin teams, we were just Berkeley and Davis in, in the States. And we thought we were gonna die. Um, Kelly cried, um, just, it was, it was very difficult. We, we were feeling very weak and we sent them out. And then about 20 of the students came back for our Thanksgiving retreat and, and got on the stage and sang a tearjerker song, thank you for giving to the Lord with our whole congregation. Not a dry eye in the room. And we said, we, we gotta keep doing this. Yeah, so I'm always thankful for the Austin church. I, I, I used to tell them because you guys responded that way, we got the courage to keep planting churches. What has been the hardest part in that process? Like the most difficult slash most painful process for you? If you want an easy path, don't do church planting. All our best friends move away. Like last year, we had this beautiful picture of sending out Story Hill. And what you don't see is my 11-year-old son. The last time I can remember him crying was when we sent out that church plant because his best friend and my daughter's best friend and my wife and I's best friends left. You know, and so I'm watching my 11-year-old ball. You know, so if you want it to be easy, just don't do it. What, what, what's been hard about, about ministry in general, I think is very similar to that. It's just that, you know, you invest so much and you get wounded a lot. And, uh, and then, you know, everybody can publish into the World Wide Web and that, that hurts and you have to be really thick skinned and, you know, it's not just you, it's your whole family that gets involved in that. So that's, that's probably um, one of the hardest. Um, the other thing is um, sending out these planters, it, it really weakens your church. And people who say, oh man, all, all the best went out and then everybody replaced and it's better than before. Like that's not, 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 that's not my experience. It's, it's harder and, um, and it's disruptive. And, you know, our culture of like really being close is, is almost like being threatened in the, in the sense that, well, I mean, you're gonna be gone in a few years to a church plant, so why do I open up to you? Being, being a leader means you're receiving a lot of bad news, but receiving a lot of bad news all the time, and you know, now it's from multiple people. The joys are amazing too, because you see these students and like, oh, where would we be if we're not for this pain? So, where will you be if you're looking ahead and you're predicting, hey, this is where I'm going to be, this is what I'm going to be doing 10 years from now? I think if we can give any encouragement to anybody in this room, it's like average people can plant collegiate churches. <laughs> like that's, that's all I got for you. Um, but I think that's kind of cool, you know? So, uh, cool. so that's cool. like, that's our rally cry. We're like normal average people trying to glorify God. We keep the main thing the main thing. The main thing is not multiplying. The main thing is Jesus and the gospel. And my hope is that personally, 10 years from now, I would um, still love Christ. You know, that I would still just be amazed at grace. I, I would like that to be true. And I know that sounds like not some multiplying thing, but like the number one job we have to do is make sure we never lose the wonder of the cross. And so my hope is that what will be true of us 10 years from now as a movement is we'll be more humble and we'll be more Christ-like and we would still uh, tear up when we talk about God saving us. I hope that's still true.